Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, I would like to read an article entitled Maritime Security Conceptualization in Southeast Asia, the Implications of Convergence and Divergence. This article is part of Conceptualization of Maritime Security in Southeast Asia, a series of analyses produced by expert convened by the Esra Charatnam School of International Studies. Former senior fellow in the RSIS Maritime Security Program, Commodore Sam Batman Oren con observed over a decade ago that a fundamental issue that arises when considering maritime security is the lack of an accurate definition of the term maritime security. Writing about maritime security in Southeast Asia, Dr. Betterman notes that regional states have been unable to agree on precisely what constituent element should and should not be covered by that definition. He further notes the several issues that appear to, the, to be minor maritime security challenge, such as different interpretation of key element of the law of the sea, dispute regarding certain maritime zones, and maintaining good, good order at sea are actually issues that divide solution and hence he called them the wicked problem of maritime security. These observations remain even more valid in the present day. The discussion of the RSI is principle revealed that the key coastal Southeast Asian states conceive of maritime security as a comprehensive concept that encompasses all risks to the prosperity of the state and nation at sea. Those include state, non-state, and environmental threats. The activities taken within the conceptual framework of maritime security include military action, policy and socio-economic development. <coughs> Regional states are concerned about Chinese action that threaten their sovereign rights and responsibilities, but are not seeking to develop their maritime security capacities exclusively as a response to China. Instead, they focus on on advancing opportunities to enable the socio-economic development of the maritime space by keeping the by keeping the water safe, secure, and free of foreign influence. In contrast, the Quad member conceive maritime security a bit more narrowly, focusing activities to counter threats posed by both states and non-state actors. Of course, without formal definitions, these distinctions must be considered as generalizations and cannot be regarded as absolute. So long as clear definitions are lacking, regional policymakers will have to continue benefiting from the option created by ambiguity while navigating around the real dangers of equivocation. Ambiguous usage of the term maritime security has certain advantages. Domestically, a vacuum omnibus usage can encourage coordination between various agencies holding stakes in the maritime affairs. While avoiding focus on specific tasking that may highlight differing mandates, parse authorities, or enable undesirable inter-nation competition. However, this usually only avoid bureaucratic conflict rather than addressing the issue needed for truly coordinated interagency action. Without a national definition of maritime security to provide the strategic context, stakeholders naturally compete for highly 
value tasks and avoid those with lower institutional rewards. Furthermore, lack of definition means the objectives are difficult to define and progress is impossible to measure. This can lead problem developing and resourcing effective strategies. When used in foreign policy, ambitious usage can promote maritime cooperation without require, requiring full deconflictions of thorny considerations such as territorial dispute, differing positions and appropriate interpretations of international law, and sovereignty sensitive. The term maritime security is sometimes used in Southeast Asia policy discourse as a brief prevarication to discuss issues without directly naming the threat. The clearest example of this would be the many diplomatic statements regarding maritime security concerns in the South China Sea, well-known state threats such as IUU fishing and environmental degradation are certainly concerned in the South China Sea. This statement have an optimistic quality that could be understood criticize Chinese maritime behavior while preserving the pliable, pliable deniability necessary to curtail, to curtail Chinese diplomatic or economic reprisals. Similarly, since maritime security capacity is general fungible, meaning the capacity to respond when threat generally benefits respond to others, said may refer to the development of naval power as maritime security capacity to reduce us captively to security dilemmas such ambiguity in becoming increasingly valuable as state competition in Southeast Asia intensifies at sea in the gray zone. The ambiguous usage of the term maritime security in the regional discourse can be also problematic. Several of the roundtable participants observed that the use of the term without a clear understanding of the process inter meaning inhibits accurate messaging and foster mistrust. Even when all dialogue parties share similar conceptualization, the questions and concerns about others' intentions can seep into communication and cloud decision making. The short of diplomatic miscommunication can prevent capitalization on opportunities for cooperation, exacerbate misunderstanding, and undermine prospect for crisis management. So that's all the article. Bye bye, and see you on my next video. Bye.